Hey there, Kristen Walter with The Real Classroom coming to you today, talking to you about my first piece of hate mail, why it matters, what I'm going to do about it, and what you can do about it. Stay tuned. This is a hot and juicy one. And put the kids in another room because it's going to get a little nasty today. Okay, before we get started, thanks again for coming. Make sure you click the like button, the subscribe button, leave a comment below. Today is a hot and juicy topic. I'm just going to dive right in. So here's what happened. So I send a lot of emails through my program, The Real Classroom, and I send emails to a lot of people who've been interested, who have signed up for my stuff. And I don't always look to see who they are because I figure if they're emailing me, they are interested in what I'm offering. So I sent an email out and I'm gonna put it on the screen here in a minute, showing uh, that I'm offering a scholarship for my brokerage in a box signature course. So that course right now, I'm charging $1,997 for it. And I'm offering scholarships or I was offering scholarships to women and other minorities. And so I'll bring it up on the screen right now so you can see. So here is the email that I sent out. Currently accepting scholarship applications. Here's the brokerage in a box. But first I have to tell you something. I'm committed to making sure that everyone has access to this class and that I'm offering scholarships. If you're ready, if you need financial support, submit the application and then I go into it below on what the application needs to have. So then I talk about who you have to be to get the scholarship. And the first one, as you can see here, says be a woman owned and or a minority owned business as defined by the Small Business Administration. So 51% plus minority ownership by a minority group member who's an individual who is at least 25% Asian, Black, Hispanic, or Native American. That is like the first thing that I put as wanting to help other people. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know why, because as a woman, I have been discriminated against numerous times in the real estate agency business. And, you know, not by other minorities, but by old white men. And so in order to try to help with this, I've put this scholarship together because I know that that we as women and then minorities face an institutional racism and an institution that is built against us. Because if it wasn't built against us, then why aren't more large brokerages owned by minorities? And so I thought that this was my way to help other people in a little tiny bit of a way. It was like literally the least I could do. So I sent this email out to, you know, thousands of people. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. It's my mission. It's actually part of the way that I do what's called segmenting. And I love it because ever since I've been outspoken that women are my people, minorities are my people, in my real estate brokerage, as well as in my classroom, it has helped to separate the people away from me who are not my customers the people who are going to be ugly to me, who are they in themselves inherently racist or homophobic or bigots or whatever. And so I've enjoyed doing it because I haven't really faced a lot of overt backlash since. Before I was outspoken, I would get caught off guard a lot. I'd be in an office situation or I'd be in a showing situation and someone would make a racist slur or a homophobic remark. And it would really kind of, you know, shake me off my center and take me off my game. Well, now that I'm open and, and honest and authentic about all of it, I don't get a lot of people making those offhanded weird remarks. They avoid me like the plague. And I like that. And so that's the first lesson I want to teach you today. And I talk about it in a lot of my other videos. I talk about it in my courses, but I'm just going to keep talking about it. If you want to keep these types of people at bay, you need to be vocal. You need to be um, explicit with your communication and do what you can to stand for who you are and stand for other people and communicate it in your marketing and in every step of your business. So let me just get to the email that I got from this guy. 
So here's the email that I got from, it is a white male. He identifies himself at the very end. So like I said, I sent the email about the scholarships and he got it. And I maybe should have segmented all the guys out, but I wasn't thinking about that. He says to me, this is discrimination against me simply because I was born of light skin color. Um, born into a poor alcoholic family with no food to eat at Christmas, much less presents to open. My story is one that is heartbreaking and winding and Hollywood worthy. It was a tough life, but I persevered and got up every day and said, I will not be like my parents. I don't want that life. Okay, so this is the part where I react. My first reaction when I read this, the first line, this is discrimination against me because I was born of light skin color. He might as well have just said because he was born white. And yeah, okay, I am discriminating against white men because they've had the leg up in our industry since the beginning. I'm also discriminating against him simply because he is a man, because I'm going to talk to you about it a little bit in a minute about the pink tax and about black women equal pay. And yeah, so I'm discriminating against him. I get to do that. It's my business. I get to refuse service to any customer that I want. It's just funny to me that he would have taken the time to write this whole long email and try to give me his sob story and try to make me to feel bad about the things that I was doing. And my second reaction to this first paragraph was his sob story about being born into a poor alcoholic family with no food to eat at Christmas. So here's what I have to say about that. <clears throat> I'm sorry for your experience. I can understand that that was probably a very crappy way to grow up. And I will say that in my family, we have had something similar in previous generations that um, would be a lot more terrible than the story that you're telling me today. The difference between my father's story and your story is that my dad would never send a nasty email like this to another woman. So that's my first response to you, is that you had, was, you were born into a poor alcoholic family like so many people, um, but those people aren't uh, lashing out at me for doing what I think is the right thing to do. So anyways, he goes on to say he got up every day, he went to school and barely passed, but he passed. He had no help, no guidance. I made a choice to join the band in high school so I could go to football games for free. We didn't have money to go anywhere. So I joined the band and got a band scholarship. Then there I goofed off my first year in college and lost my scholarship. I knew I had to get my grades up to get my scholarship. So I took all physical education classes and I got my GPA, GPA up and I got my scholarship back. I learned from the loss of my scholarship that I needed to apply myself to keep that scholarship. Throughout life since then, I wake up saying what I'm grateful for and I always include the challenges and lack of as a child that made me see that I wanted to be better and change my family's legacy. I also get up with the intention to be better today than I was yesterday. I strive to earn an income to support my family, unlike the child I grew, childhood I grew up in. And this is the part where he says something that I completely disagree with. And I want you to put your comments below and let me know what I'm missing because I'm only speaking from my small experience um, and I need to hear from you. But he says to me, my color did not get me where I am today. My mindset did. So, you know, this is the problem in America right now. This is the problem in the world that you have white people like this thinking that they don't have white privilege. I can see where there's also a double-edged sword where some of this could be true. His color didn't get him where he is today. His mindset did. I can totally agree with that. There's lots of different kinds of people of all different skin colors who say that they didn't have any racism or they didn't have any blocks because of who they were and the color of their skin. But there's still a lot of people and a lot of statistics and a lot of data that says this is still a problem. So when he says to me, my color didn't get me where I am today, my mindset did, it just gets under my skin. It's just a blanket refusal of any type of responsibility or acknowledgement that there is a broken system right now. And, and it, even if I'm only talking about real estate agency and brokerage, you know, like I said in my other video, it's 
very evidently clear that there are hardly any women at the top, let alone women of color at the top in the real estate agency and brokerage industry. So when he says something like this, all I can think of is all the other times that I've been bullied by old white men as a real estate agent, trying to make me think that something is not really happening when it is happening. This is called gaslighting. This is, you know your reality, you know what's really true about your experiences, and then you have someone telling you that it's not true. So whatever, that's his experience, okay? Let's keep moving with the email. He says, I changed the way that I looked at things and then the things I looked at changed. I feel like he speaks in bumper stickers. I had zero direction growing up. I would say that that's probably not true if he was in band and got scholarship, but whatever. What I did understand is when I hung around folks who were smarter than me and had more money than me, I always learned useful information that I applied to my life, which enabled me to excel. Here's the part that shows you the privilege that he doesn't even know that he has. The definition of privilege is having access to resources and people that you normally wouldn't have access to. So the fact that he had access to other people who were smarter than him and had more money than him tells me that he lived some sort of certain type of privilege. And so how am I supposed to respond to this in an email? How am I supposed to like, you know, agree with him and like say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When he straight up shows me that he's had a better life than other people who are more disadvantaged than him. And here's what I know, okay? So I didn't grow up, um, you know, with a different skin color. I obviously grew up white, but when my, I was teaching elementary school, I taught in title one schools. I taught in schools where 90% of the children or more were on free and reduced lunch. And I saw the lives that they led. I saw the poverty that they lived in. I saw that they went without food on the weekends, that they went without food in the summer, and that they did not have people with more money than them that they could hang out with. So I'm, I'm really saddened by this part of his email because he makes it just sound like if you're poor and disadvantaged or discriminated against that you can just go out and find a mentor or go out and find a rich uncle or something. It's just so beyond me that he's not even seeing the forest for the trees here. Okay, so he says, from there I searched out the kind of people I would like to be and began hanging out with them. Again, not everyone has that privilege. I'm much older now and realize we become the product of the five people we spend the most time with. I, again, let's talk in bumper stickers. I'm sure that's in a book somewhere. It's a choice regardless of skin color. This is true. It's a choice. I don't know about the discrimination part. I would love to hear your comments below. He says, I chose to not be a victim and to not have the victim mentality because of my childhood and my childhood surroundings, which included both mental and physical abuse. Okay, so now he's equating discrimination with victimhood. And this is just completely out of the realm of understanding on his part, because it's not the same thing. I'm going to keep reading his email. I'm appalled that I would not be eligible for this scholarship based solely on my skin color. All that said, becoming a broker in Texas is very defined in the education and passing the broker national and state exams. I have no desire to be a broker, but if I did, I would go about it in the correct way. I doubt I will ever hear anything from any of you, mostly because I'm a white male who busted my body working two and three jobs my entire life trying to provide. Real estate gave me a life I desired and love. I studied for 18 months while caring for my mother who was dying from cancer before taking my test. Not until my mother passed away was I able to finish studying and take the test. It wasn't easy and I had no one give me anything. I am proud because I overcame my obstacles in life, the same obstacles many have regardless of their color or orientation. That's how he finishes it out because in my email, remember I talked about also helping other LGBTQ people. So, you know, it's easy to continue to try to bully people 
it's crazy to me that he's giving me his sob story. So like, why wouldn't you just delete the email? If you don't need the scholarship and you don't want the scholarship and you don't want to work with me and you don't want to take my courses. Instead, he spent a lot of time typing that email to me and telling me his sob story. And the teacher in me says, well, you didn't follow directions. I'm not even going to read this and process it. Like, you know, denied, scholarship denied. You don't need it. You don't want it, whatever. It's just, it just gets under my skin because every day I'm trying to raise awareness about the problems that we have in our industry as real estate professionals and our discrimination that we have in the housing industry you know, I talk about the foreclosure moratorium, and now there's studies coming out and saying that the people that are going to be hit the hardest, guess who? Women, women of color. Like, how much data do we have to disseminate, and how much work do we have to do to get through to some of these people? Well, the fact is, is we're never going to get through to any of these people. They're going to dig their heels in. They're going to continue sending nasty messages like this to people like me. They're going to continue to just fight to you know, gaslight all of us to say that it's not happening. So I want to throw out a couple of examples for you, just to show you where I'm coming from, um, not just on an emotional level, but, but why I want to help other women. So before I show you the data, make sure you click the like button, the subscribe button, share this video with your friends, because I guarantee you, if you're a woman, if you're a minority, in the real estate agent or brokerage business, you are being discriminated against. You are having what my friend calls microaggressions towards you. So people are making these tiny little remarks and they're making you to feel a certain kind of way because you're not a part of the majority, which they're not even a part of the majority anymore. And please don't get me wrong. I'm not a man hater. I don't hate anyone. I just think that we all need a leg up and we all need to help one another. We need to raise awareness and we need to continue to fight for the things that we believe in and the things that are important to us. And one of those things, in my opinion, is helping other women and minorities with financial independence and financial freedom. And as real estate agents, we can go out there and sell the heck out of some properties. But what we can't do really easily is become broker owners and become very successful broker owners and franchise that out or create a large corporation. Barbara Corcoran is a great example. She's one of the only examples of having created her own independent real estate brokerage and then franchising that out. So now she's selling franchises that you can buy into. You can't say the same thing about the other big corporations. So that's why I keep doing these videos and trying to talk to you guys and get you to share them and stop drinking the Kool-Aid. Stop going to these companies that are empowering you on every level because there's people like this in your company. They're not saying it to you directly, but they're hiding behind a keyboard and they're typing it to people like me and they're talking about it in the office behind your back. So today, on the day that I am recording this, I am recording it on Black Women's Equal Pay Day. Black women have to work 579 days to earn what white men do in 365 days. This is on NBC News. It's on all types of news today. Today is Tuesday, August the 3rd, and today is that day that I'm recording it for you. And I just want to put that statistic out there for you. It's, um, it's just uh, another startling statistic that we, need to acknowledge and, and find out what we can do about it. The other statistic that you might not have ever heard of is called the pink tax. So as a woman, I pay more money for my goods and services just for my shampoo than a man does, for my makeup, for my feminine products, for the clothes that I have to wear, then I'm expected to look a certain way in front of a corporation as opposed to a man. Think about it. Last time you saw someone on the corporate stage, there was a man next to a woman. Wasn't the man probably wearing blue jeans, a button down shirt and a blazer? Was the woman allowed to wear blue jeans? Probably not acceptable. So this is what the pink tax is about. And it doesn't only affect adult women. There's studies showing from New York City 
that it starts with girls toys from the very beginning when they're small girls toys are more expensive than boy, boys toys so i'm going to put this article below and i want you to start thinking about all the extra stuff that you have to pay for your little girls at home and as a woman that a man doesn't have to pay for this is why i'm doing what i'm doing this is why i'm offering the scholarships this is why I want to work with other women who want to empower other women and become financially free. So in order to help raise awareness about these types of things, I'm doing my best to do videos and not get passionate and heated about it. But when I get an email like this from this man in Texas, it just goes to show no matter how outspoken I am and how clear I am, with my own experiences, with data, is that there's still gonna be people that are trying to push us down. There's still gonna be people that don't wanna get it through their heads that they have a certain privilege that we do not. What I wanna say to you, what I always say to everyone is ignore those people. Don't feed the trolls. Today, I'm probably feeding the trolls. I'm probably gonna get some comments, some dislikes. I'm gonna get some more hate mail, whatever just let it go in one ear and out the other and address it when you can try to raise awareness try to educate people try to do counseling for people who really want to learn if they're asking you the right questions um, but for the most part what you need to do when you get in a situation like this whether it's in real life or behind a keyboard on facebook an email whatever do your best to ignore it, delete it, get it out of your mind and go find a cheerleader. Go find someone that's going to support you. Go find someone that gets you. Go find someone that gets it. Okay. And just share and, and talk about it and, and get everything out that you need to get out and then move on because there's going to be a lot of people who are never going to get it. They don't want to try to get to know what's going on. They don't want to fix stuff. They want to cling to the old ways. They want to try to make us all believe that it can't be changed. They're just gaslighting the hell out of us. So keep the good fight going. Keep the faith. Focus on your cheerleaders and don't give up. And don't worry about those emails. Drop a comment below. I can't wait to see you in the next video or in class. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.